and do something I wouldn't normally do. But I think that uh, God has been saying for a few days now, this is what I need to do. Okay? So let's pray. O shanda la bakunda la bashanda la basanda la bayanda la sunda la shanda la bayalanda. Amen. And before everybody starts quoting 1 Corinthians at me and where's the interpretation, before you start doing all of that, which I can see all a bunch of people going, ding, 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 I was doing what God was calling me to do. 1 Corinthians, we have to be very cautious that Paul was writing to a very wayward church that were using tongues to show how super spiritual they are. And that's why he had to have a word with them. So there's two sets of interpretation. I wouldn't normally do that, as you know. Anybody knows me, I wouldn't do that at all. But there's a reason. And as we go through the sermon, hopefully it will become more and more apparent to you. Really not the last thing I want to do on my Sunday before I go on holiday, but there you go. If you've got a problem with it, see me later. If you haven't, see me later. Joshua 1, verses 6 to 9 states this. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Four times, God tells Joshua in that short passage to be strong and courageous. And once to say, do not be afraid or discouraged. Joshua is not to be strong in his own strength. He's not to have courage generated from the inside as such, born on his own ability. He is to be strong and courageous. I just said to somebody who doesn't speak very good English, don't panic, nor do I. Strong and courageous because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You are to be strong and courageous because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We have the same promise in Matthew 28, verses 18 to 19. And be sure of this, says Jesus, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I'm going to read the whole of that fully to you now. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Encouraging. I find it encouraging, don't you? I think we also read that sometimes and we forget the bit that he says, go and make disciples of all nations. We like the, he's with me until the end of the age. So my personal angst that I'm going through, God is with me to the end of the age. But we have to read it in context of the bits before that as well. Go and tell people about my kingdom. It also says in Proverbs 28, uh, sorry, 29 to 25, Fearing people is a dangerous trap, 
But trusting the Lord means safety. <coughs> 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 7 to 8 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about the Lord. God wants us to tell others about him. Yes? Yes. Yes. He wants us to go and make disciples. By the way, uh, making disciples is not just making converts. Making a disciple is actually making some, you know, converting somebody. And then as they come to know Jesus, you walk with them in helping them grow. They become good pupils of Jesus. But if we're honest, telling, um, telling people about Jesus is scary, if you're honest. It's not something that naturally rolls off your tongue, isn't it? Hi, let me tell you about Jesus. He's my Lord and Saviour. Hi, I know I've just met you. Yeah? When somebody says to you, oh, that's amazing. How do, you, how do you live life? How's your life? And actually saying, well, God is with me all the time. Jesus is here. I'm a lover of him. I think he's great. Yeah, even using that word, I am a lover of him. I follow Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus died for my sins. How many of you feel worried about saying that because you feel like you're going to look stupid? Or what are they going to think of me in a minute? I'm not asking anybody to raise their hands. It's okay. And there's some people we might be really comfortable doing that with. People I'm just passing by. Never going to see you again. I remember back a few years ago when I was uh, uh, in, uh, at the Baptist Assembly. Uh, this is when they did the four-day sessions. And we were in Blackpool. And one of the things they wanted, uh, one of the seminars was to go out onto the Blackpool streets and go and prophetically tell people about Jesus, offer hugs. Do you remember Chris Duffett who came here, was the Baptist uh, president for a year? He's very much into that, sort of being on the streets, Saturdays in Peterborough and stuff like that. And it was with Chris, so now having, you know, knew Chris, I thought, oh, I'll go and do that, that'd be a, I didn't say that'd be a laugh, that's not quite the phrase that went through my head, but I feel I should do this. And, uh, and one of the things they made us do, uh, made, M-A-D-E, uh, made us do, was uh, take some cards uh, and uh, blank cards. And if you suddenly felt you needed to write, write out the cards. It was like a normal sort of gift card, you know. You know happy birthday, happy anniversary, 17 years. Did you do the 17? Yeah. Bunch of flowers, no? Bunch of, no, no bunch of flowers, okay. I feel like his ears on now. Bunch of flowers. Um, do the card, and now you feel like, write in there to them, write a Bible verse, or whatever you think God might be saying, you want to then go and give it to someone. Well, I was partnered up with somebody I've never met before, and uh, we prayed together, and we sat there, and as we sat there, we, we, we sort of bumped into a few people, didn't get a lot, and then decided, I decided to write out a Bible verse in my card, and thought, oh, God will tell me who to give this to. Not a problem. So I thought, it's just giving a card. I mean, how difficult is that, Yeah. You can easily walk up to them. I mean, you walk down the high street these days, people are always dishing out leaflets, aren't they? Certain telephone company, beginning with L and ending in A, and, you know, a particular Golden Arch company, you know, would you like some free food, voucher off, money food? You know, you get all of that, don't you? So we're used to receiving leaflets, aren't we? And stuff. So really, it wouldn't be that random to go up to someone and say, here you go, card, and walk off, yeah? That should be easy, shouldn't it? Not when God says to you, what you're going to do is go into that sports health shop there and there is a girl behind the counter to whom you're going to give this card to. Now bear in mind we're in Blackpool. That's a few hundred miles away from here. 
chance of me ever bumping that person? Never going to happen again. So I didn't bump into them, don't panic. This is not the story. The punchline is, and you're not going to believe this. That's not the punchline. But could I do, could I actually go, all I'm going to do is walk into a shop, walk into it now. It's like walking, well, firstly, I'm going into a health shop. That's like me going into a betting shop. What does health food look like? There's all these things advertising protein to build up your muscles. You're all right, thanks. That's what swimming's for. But I'd go in the shop, and I remember sitting there going, no, nah, you're kidding me, aren't you, Lord? You really want me to go? Okay. All I'm doing is giving this woman a card. Well, walk into the shop, and there was two women behind the counter. Isn't God fun? <laughs> Which one? So I walk up, and they said, can I help you? I said, yes, you're never going to see me again. I remember the words well. You're never going to see me again, but, and I realised which one of the two it was. God sort of made it quite clear. It was the uh, younger lady out of the two. And, um, well, it's really quite, yeah, I'm um, from the Baptist Assembly. We're currently, well, the other woman just disappeared into the office quicker than Jack Flash. I thought, that's good backup, isn't it? And uh, so I walked in and I went, yeah, hi, I, I just want to, look, I really feel God really wants to just say, look, you're his workmanship and he, he wants to give you this, this card. Okay, nothing creepy, you won't ever see me again, goodbye, thank you. <laughs> I kid you not, that's how it happened. Who wants to give that a try next time? Come on. Steve, Steve, Steve. Yeah, Steve, yeah, well. But that wasn't difficult. Yes, it was a bit weird for the other person. But if I was honest, what was probably going through my mind was, what is she going to think of me? How creepy. I mean, I must admit, you think, a geezer in his late 30s, going up to, let's say she was about, it was a Saturday, so maybe she was about, say, 18. It did look a bit creepy. weird. Especially with my grin, you're right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> It did look a tad weird and a bit creepy. Yeah, on one level, it looked a bit weird. But I was pure. But the way I did it was almost like grovel, 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 grovel. <laughs> Comical. Yeah, but, yeah, it was. I'll tell you. You look back at it with a sense of shade of embarrassment. But I didn't know what else to do because there is this sense of how's that going to go. Say she does this. I mean, I thought about this afterwards, not in some random. But you think about this. That could have been so weird. And that was in the height of where there was some that weirdness kicking around. She could have phoned the police. There's some weird creepy guy <laughs> dishing out cards saying I'm God's workmanship. But just how that whole process went from beginning to end. And at the end of the day, all I'm doing is coming up and basically saying, do you know something? God loves you. No, I have no idea. I'm really praying. I, occasionally she comes into my prayers. I remember her. You know, I, have no, I can't remember what she looks like. Believe me, I, can't, I have no clue what she looks like. I know the health shop. I remember its name. That's it. But occasionally I think, you know, I wonder what happened. What if she knows Jesus now? What if that was like a stepping stone, one seed planted that, that actually has brought her to Jesus, even in my timidity and stupidity and embarrassment? But I ask you the question, do we all walk around like that, fearful to tell somebody about Jesus? Strangers we may not struggle with so much, but our family, our immediate close friends who we've known for years, but we've never actually told them the gospel. Oh, they know we go to church, they know we're Christian people. But we actually ever told them the gospel. Why not? Well, was it for me as I walked into that shop, even though God was saying, go in that shop? Did I forget the fact that God is always with me to the very end of the age? And if God wanted me to go in there, he'd already prepared the place. If he was going to say, this lady, he'd already prepared the place, hadn't he? Back to Joshua. Who I had marked and now I've lost. God says in here, 
Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I would give them. Be strong and courageous. I'm going to give you the land. I'm, I, God, am giving you the land you have to go and possess. Verse 3 of uh, Joshua, it says, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be, sorry, you will be on land I have given you. God has given that land. The issue is, is that the Israelites needed to go and engage and take the land. You know when we were singing that song earlier on, greater things, I'm not going to sing. It's the only way I can get it. Greater things are yet to come, greater things to be done in this city. That was for me the thing. But we pray, God, yeah, change the city, do this, make people come Christians or whatever. Make them get to want to come to church. But God says, yeah, I will do when you go and take possession. When you go and do it. I prepare the land, I've given that person to you but you need to actually engage with it. The Israelites would never have got the land unless they physically went and took it. And we know in the whole of Joshua, they screwed up. In our Bible group, we're reading the whole of Joshua. Boy, they messed up. And they went to places God wasn't ready for them to go yet. But other times when they went, did exactly as God said, guess what? They took the land with no problem. God actually works with us to make things happen. I know that sounds really, sometimes we go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you really think about that. God, creator, sustainer of the universe, timeless, eternal, all love, works with you and me for his purposes to come about. Expects you to do your bit as he's already done his bit. So in this Joshua, the same principle works today. God is the same. The land is spiritual domain. Israelites are us. We're told to go and make disciples. Told to go and claim that which God has already given us. It's not for our sake, it's for his kingdom. We are told to go and do that. And I'm giving you these people. Amen? it's this time of the year um, that actually we might need reminding that the Lord is a warrior he's been sitting up there Exodus 15 3 I don't know how often you reflect on it but I think it's something that we need to constantly come back to as a character part of our God that he is a warrior again I come back to the fact it's not about violence and fighting and bloodshed and all that it's about actually how jealously he wants to retake land, reclaim people for his name and for his glory. People that he has created in his image. Everybody in this room say hi. hi. With a bit of enthusiasm. Everybody in this room say hi. hi. You are created in God's image. Everybody out there, if I could get the entire world to go hi, they're created in God's image. And God wants to reclaim them almost like, well, like a warrior, what we understand as an army, will want to retake ground. He wants to retake the spiritual dominion in people, reclaim them back for his very own. Back to how they were. The divine warrior theme is laced throughout the Bible. So it's not a side of the character of God that we can ignore. And I said, looking at Jesus, he cast out demons, yes? He cured the sick. He told the truth to those who actually needed to hear it, and even to those who didn't want to hear it. 
My favourite part about Jesus, he overturned tables and whipped out the animals for the corruption that was going on. He didn't worry about what people thought. He insulted the religious leaders. He didn't allow the prevailing culture to influence his way of following God. These are the actions of not a meek and mild Jesus. These are not the actions of somebody who fears man. This is somebody who went in the authority of his Lord. Yes? In the authority of his Father. We go in authority and strength of a warrior God. Loving people with all the might of heaven, praying the bold prayers of healing, casting out demons, the miraculous. We should be out there doing that. We've got it. It's not even just a should. We've got the gifts here right now. Amen? Amen. Really have. But we don't seem to use them sufficiently. Now, why is that outside? And I'm, don't be sitting there going, but, but don't. But you think over your weeks, your normal weeks, how often do you engage with the concept of actually using the gifts that God has given you, that boldness of prayer, not in your quiet room, not in your your bedroom or in your living room, but I'm talking actually physically amongst other people who don't know Jesus yet. Why don't we do that? Note the phrase, we. Fear, I would suggest. Lack of confidence in God. Lack of confidence who I am in God. We change the atmosphere when we enter into a place. Did you know that? Whole point, I think, of praying in tongues is a proof of, not because tongues is the best of all things, but it's the most outward experience at that moment, is the fact that actually we change the atmosphere spiritually when we walk into a place. Whether you speak in tongues is not, is, is not the issue here. Each person has a different gifting, different spiritual gifting. Okay, hear me carefully. I think, as Paul says, I'd rather people spoke prophetically into people's lives, did healings, that's much more of an expression of God. I just did it here within the family. But we change the atmosphere, but I think we're scared to use them outwardly. If we're scared to use them within the church body, whatever they are, what kind of chance have you got of using it out there? I'm scared to even use the one gift that most of us are sort of okay with, stones here, just for a moment, without thinking, oh, what's everybody going to think? Am I going to get quoted 1 Corinthians at me in a minute? What are the chance we've got doing anything out there? It says in Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in place of honour at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Where is Jesus? All right, let's rephrase that. Where is Jesus not? It's not anywhere. He's everywhere. It says right at the beginning, I pray that you'll understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. I pray that you'll understand the incredible greatness of the power that you have in God if you believe him. We have
have incredible power at our fingertips. Do you understand that? Look at your fingertips. Some of you looking now thinking, I wish I got my nails cut. <laughs> Didn't do my nail varnish very well. I know the feeling. But look at the ends of them, just for a minute. I know it's not quite literal, but just for the pictorial look. If God says, I have given you X, I have endowed you with the gift of this, I have... Well, I just go right back. The minute you got baptised, the Holy Spirit sits in you. Amen? Amen? Okay, so the Holy Spirit, he can do anything he wants, yes? So if he decides to use you strongly and powerful in somebody's life, he will do, yes? yes? We have to believe him when he says, it's not your strength that does it, it's me that does it through you, if you let me. So it's not always about healing, but I said to you, it's about telling somebody about Jesus in the way that you are built. In the way that you speak. don't have to use high convoluted words. To use Dester's thing, you keep it real. You, as, uh, you say as you are. And do it the way you do it. But it's the Holy Spirit in you that gives those words. And they're not always biblical words. Trust me, aye, they're not swearing. Hear me carefully. But what I'm saying is, that just you could be talking away, thinking, why am, I talk why am I saying this to this person? And it's because the Holy Spirit's just giving you something just to say. It's not some, um, oh, hello, God's gone boom, like this on me. It's as you're talking, you don't realise, but God's actually manifesting something out of you. There are times that God goes, and dum, if I had done with me and Denzel at the um, fun fair, there was a bite, I looked at him, and I thought, hmm. I know what you used to do for a living. Rather than just saying, you used to be an ex, I actually went to him, could you tell me what you used to do for a living? I backed down a little bit. I'll admit, as a pastor, occasionally, I go, eh. Other times, I don't. As a few people have found out over the last two weeks, not in this church. If you're from the community, don't come into this building, you get lambasted with Jesus and who he's about. Anyway, <clears throat> another story for another time. But you have, we have, incredible power if we believe. Not if we're double-minded, as it says in James. But if we believe. Do you follow Jesus? Do you follow Jesus? Sorry, I know it's hot and I know this is probably not the most exciting sermon in the world. But do you follow Jesus? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit lives in you? Yes. So do you believe that you have a tapped in source to the entire greatness and power of the universe that raised Jesus from the dead? Yes. Then why don't you believe it Monday to Friday when you're out there? No, no, don't worry about Sunday. Yeah, that's just me. I don't bother on Sunday. I do it Monday to Saturday. No, but see the point. Seven days a week, we are anointed. We have everything. We should not fear man or woman. And of course you're married to them. You shouldn't fear man or woman. You should just think, do you know something? Here I am today representing Christ. This is where heaven touches earth. Here I am. God, what do you want me to do? That may not be dramatic. It might be just chatting to them, being friendly. But in that conversation, sometimes you've got to go, do you know something? I think right now, right now, I need to say, Jesus loves you. It's scary. I don't want to say it. I'm going to look silly. And you might get rejected. Or, pfft, or ooh, you're one of them, are you? Well, you might suddenly go, thank you. I needed to hear that. Got a bad back? Let me pray for you. Who's having fun at work? Seriously, who's having fun at work? 
Who loves every colleague in the office? I have to keep my arm up. I'm the only colleague in my office. Who loves every colleague in their office? Yep. Who's, bearing in mind, love is Christ-like love. You may not like them. Who enjoys office politics? <laughs> I have to keep my arm up. Um, <laughs> what's the point I'm getting at? Who dreads walking into work? <laughs> arm down. <laughs> point I'm trying to get at is this. I used to, we all do, sometimes leave mentally God at the doorsteps of our office front door. We forget if we walk in the fullness and measure of Christ and all the power that's at the tip of our fingertips, we, because God is in us, change the atmosphere. It's God that changes the atmosphere, but you know what I mean. If we acknowledge it's there with us and not double-minded, we change the atmosphere. Now it says in Ephesians, pray in the spirit on all occasions, yes? That could be your praying, actively praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit, by the way, doesn't mean just tongues. It means just praying what the spirit's telling you to pray. But you can walk around the office silently praying. When you're, I don't know, the photocopies that exist these days in the offices. But, oh, good, yeah. I still remember fixing the things. But why you can sit there, you can be praying into the office that the atmosphere in the office changes, that God's kingdom comes within your workplace. Ever tried that? You have to believe it, though, Jonathan. <laughs> actually, as you're praying into that, guess who's going to be actually attacking back? Yeah. Uh -huh. But we change the atmosphere because God is a warrior. Do you know, God is not some light-hearted, all lovey-dovey person. I think that's half the issue, is that we forget who he is, how powerful he is. And then we forget... When he says, I have forgiven you for all eternity, we've got to go, okay, thanks very much, I'll run in that. The Lord is a warrior. Amen? Amen. The Lord is a warrior. Amen. And he wants us to actively run in that. Because he loves us. The only reason you're all here in this room is because God wanted you actively. Sought you out, seeked you out, got you. Other people were used to portray the gospel to you. Tell me who didn't tell you the gospel. Tell me that you just came here by some divine revelation from God. That was it. Thanks, Carol. Really unhelpful. You mean you never heard about Jesus at school once? Oh, I heard it. Ah, you see, that's what I mean. So I think it's amazing, not I'm going to go on about it too much because I'm not really into it, but the Olympics, there's this constant view at the moment of Jesus, isn't there? Now whatever you think of them, it's the first time I've ever really seen the statue, they really had pierced holes here and in his feet and a heart here, but just the fact that, who told you about Jesus? Raise your hands if somebody told you about Jesus at some point in your life. My first one was probably my deputy headmaster at Brentside. Turns out he was a Christian. But they had the boldness because they didn't worry about what the person thought of them. What they were concerned about was that person's salvation. And I think that's something we forget. That people are dying today and are walking dead and are never going to know Jesus. And are going to live eternally in hell and damnation. Whether you like it or not, it exists. I know in our lovely postmodern society, we don't like the idea of thinking hell really exists. Whatever it looks like, it's most certainly eternal separation from God. And if you think this planet is bad enough, God's actually in this planet. Wait until he no longer wants to be around for people. Once you're separated from him permanently, imagine what hell looks like then. There are greater things to be done in this city, and it's down to... Thank you. Because the Lord is a warrior and he's got so much for us and out there.
question you have to ask yourself, do you really believe that? Or do you believe it for now during this little talk and you forget about it once you walk out the front door? Who's sitting there with all their little worries now going on in their mind about all their situations in their life? I'm asking you to raise your hands. Suddenly your head's going on about next week. Oh yeah, but God can't sort that out. Why not? Why not? I would like you to turn to the person next to you. There's three of you, then link up the three of you. If you're on your own, move. I would like you to turn to the person next to you for a minute. I would like you to recount to that person next to you, if you're able to, the defining moment that you knew that Jesus was real. Now, you might be somebody who doesn't know that yet, and that's absolutely fine. If you're comfortable, admit it to the person that you're with. But I would like you to look now and say, actually, I can qualify the moment that I knew that Jesus was real and how it came about. Try and make it no more than three minutes talk each. Go. Okay. Here's a question for you. Who found that quite energising? Yeah. Who found reminding yourself more than anything else, reminding yourself of that defining moment? Who actually found that energising and thought, gosh, yeah, I'd actually forgotten how that was and how I felt? Yeah? I think there's times we need reminding. Because then when we remember how we felt, I wonder if that energises us to remember how somebody else who doesn't know him yet, how they're going to feel when they do come to know Jesus. Because maybe I wasn't scared to open my mouth. I wasn't scared to pray for them there and then. I recognise all the fullness of the power that has raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Actually sits in me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that excitement of that person coming to know Christ is the same excitement that I've just remembered that I had. Mine was in a car. <coughs> Wouldn't surprise you. Speeding. No, I wasn't speeding. <laughs> oh, Jesus, please stop. I'll follow you if you're going to let me not hit that person. No, it wasn't like that. It was just my best place to do my thinking. But that excitement of accepting Jesus into your life, of actually knowing he is real. But what I've got to say is all prior to me coming to know Christ... There was lots of people telling me, my mother included. Just think, just think, in these fingertips, because of Christ, you have the ability to tell your family, your friends, your work colleagues, anyone else you can think of, your neighbours, who Jesus is, not with timidity, but with power. With authority. The authority of a warrior Jesus, who wants to reclaim them for Christ today. We need to believe him when he says that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him.
I like to say that's the wind of the spirit blowing through, but I'm not quite sure. So I think as you walk out of here today, walk out reflecting on that. I don't know what you're thinking about, whether you're thinking about dinner or what you're doing this afternoon in this lovely sunshine. But think about the incredible greatness that sits in here. If we're not scared to tell, if we're willing to accept the authority that is within us. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, as the, funny enough, as the wind literally does blow through, Lord, I pray that actually the tornado of your spirit will inspire us, will fill us and flood us. You're already in us and flooding and filling us. Lord, give us the tornado of the authority, the boldness, the confidence to recognise, Lord, that we project you into other people's lives. We change the atmosphere when we're active in your spirit. Help us to be bold. Help us to be confident. Doesn't always mean shouting it from the rooftops, Lord, but help us to be confident in authority of how you built us, be we loud people or quiet people. But give us that confidence, Lord, and that authority we already have. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.